Welcome to the Five Writers Five Minutes podcast, where five authors share their top writing tips. I'm Tristan Banks. I am Deborah Abella. I'm Zanny Louise. I'm Sarah Armstrong. I'm Leon Tanner. And the thing that I'm really interested in and that I get asked when I go and visit schools is how do you begin? How do you start a story? It's one of the trickiest things. You might have an idea, but you just don't know where the story starts or how to put those first words on the page. So I'm interested, Deb, how do you do it? Uh, I, I think it's such a great question because I think each novel that I write is different. And But with the book of Wondrous Possibilities, my latest book, I actually had an idea years ago and I thought um, my ideas always start from a, a little question. I wonder what would happen if... Um, and I thought, I wonder if there's a, you know, a bookshop and somebody in a bookshop and somebody runs into the bookshop and everything changes. And I wrote this idea years and years ago. I pitched it to my publisher about three times and she was kind of lukewarm on it until I realized, okay, I have to kind of trash this idea, keep the little part of it I love and rewrite it. And so that then became the book of wondrous possibilities. And it, it, I threw away all the stuff I didn't need. And I think that's really important when you're starting. Don't be too precious about the stuff you've already written. Be ready to throw away stuff that's not working and keep the stuff that makes you excited. Okay, good tip. I love that. Um, Sunny, what, how do you get going? Well, I have to write from something real, I've realised, because I was trying to write these fantasy adventure type things that I knew kids loved and I know people like Deb can write really well. But what I realized I needed to write something that I personally connected with. So when I stumbled across a very personal story, which was our living situation back in 2020, and I tapped into the emotion of that, that was what enabled me to be able to write Queenie in Seven Moves. So each time I go to write, sit down and write a novel, I need something real at its heart. I need, and I need a real feeling. So that's really where I begin. And I've also found with my current project, for example, it's really worth putting on some music, getting some collage material and just having a little play and just discovering. And I found an image of a hotel, which worked really, really well for kicking off the next story. That's so good. The visual thing really resonates with me. I love, I love that idea and, and the feeling thing. If you can get visuals and emotions in there, that's so good. Yeah. Sarah, do you, what did you do for Big Magic? Uh, look, sometimes with other books, um, an idea would just sort of come out of the blue in some free writing. So I do a lot of free writing, which is like writing as quickly as you can without worrying about it being lovely writing. Uh, but I feel like I, I'm a bit of a sort of bowerbird. I collect lots of little ideas and I tuck them away, whether mm. it's uh, mostly on my computer, but sometimes in my phone. And a whole lot of these ideas just sort of all came together. Uh, I went to the circus one day and saw this in, in just here in Mullumbimby where I live and saw a young boy on um, this sort of amazing chair act where they balance chairs and climb up to the top and do a handstand. And he looked about 13 or 12 and I thought, what would it be like to grow up in a circus? So it's that question, the what if question, you know. And it just, I was thinking about it growing up in a circus and then I thought, I knew I wanted to write a story about magic and I knew I wanted to write a story with nature because those ideas had just been like circling around. It's like these sort of little ideas hovering in the background and they were just waiting for the idea of the circus to sort of land on and uh, that's how I began. I just started free writing and I do that thing of just writing and not worrying about it being that great at first because I'm just trying to explore the idea, just trying to sort of get to know the characters. That's so cool. I love that collision of a few different pieces and then suddenly when you get that last piece, that's what forces you to begin. Yeah, um, that was great. Um, Leon, how do you do it? I I combine a couple of things that people have already said. Um, I love finding pictures. I love finding character mm -hmm. pictures. And Spellhound started with a picture of this enormous black Great Dane pup who was kind of shying away from something. So so his kind of legs were all, and his ears and his tongue and everything were all over the place in this picture. And that kind of you know it was such a gorgeous picture that I thought this is a character, but that actually became a whole different book. I wrote I wrote a book called Big Dog from from that picture, and um, and I couldn't make it work. I spent a year writing it. Um, I sent it to my agent at one point, and she said, "No, Leon, no, absolutely not." Uh, and so I did what Deb did. I I, I broke it open, um, and I just kept the bits I loved, which were the pup, the dragon, 
a girl called Rose and some really nasty witches. And then I set out to play with that stuff. And the playing part is really important to me. Mm, how, how cool that you managed to get the big black dog on the front cover of Spellhound <laughs> in the end. I know, yeah. I know. Just perfect. Well, I, what do I you do, Tristan? Well, mm. um, it's interesting that I noticed on the cover of Cop and Robber behind me there is a, a road and a car because I was actually driving along to a school visit and I was going to talk about um, crime writing for kids. I was going to get, you know, get a bunch of students writing their own kind of crime stories. And I was thinking, what would it be like if a kid witnessed their own parent committing a crime? Mm. And I pulled over to the side of the road and I got my phone out and I just started jotting madly in my phone. And I wrote the first um, very bad um, kind of zero draft of the first chapter um, on my phone beside the road. And now when I go and speak in schools, I'll show them that very your first zero draft and then I'll show them how it turned out in the end. And most kids say that they really like the end one, which I'm glad about because it'd be really bad if they like the other one and not the finished version. But um, what it shows is that you really can start anywhere. Like you just begin and you don't have to get it right when you first begin. You can write the worst, you know, you can write absolutely terrible mm -hmm. stuff and um, you can change it later and have an entirely different beginning. So mm -hmm. I think this, uh, this is really good inspiration for people wanting to start their stories and hopefully people will go away from this episode um, inspired. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, hopefully. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Very have good. fun. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.